Welcome back to Branchy Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. The United Nations called for an independent investigation into the discovery of mass graves at two Gaza hospitals that were raided by Israeli troops this year. Earlier this week, a mass grave with 324 bodies was uncovered at the Nasser Medical Complex by Gaza civil defense workers, following the withdrawal of Israeli forces from the area. The city's director of civil defense alleged that the bodies had been found with their hands and feet tied, but the director's claims were not confirmed. Previously, a Khan Yunus civil defense spokesman told CNN that they are searching for the bodies of another 400 missing people after the Israeli military left on April 7th. On Wednesday, the U.S. Supreme Court faced nearly two hours of heated arguments regarding the tension between Idaho's near-total abortion ban and a federal law requiring hospitals to offer any treatment, including an abortion needed to stabilize patients in an emergency. This is the first time the High Court has scrutinized an individual state's abortion ban since the justices overturned Roe v. Wade in 2022. A few conservative justices at times joined the court's liberal wing and asking tough questions that picked apart Idaho's argument that its hospitals should not be bound to provide abortions under the federal law at issue. It was unclear whether those justices, most notably Chief Justice John Roberts and Justice Amy Coney Barrett, were prepared to vote with the three liberals against Idaho. Decisions in the case are expected by the end of June, just a few months before a presidential election where abortion rights are expected to play a major role. On Wednesday, President Joe Biden signed a bill forcing TikTok to find a new owner within nine months or face a ban. The president's endorsement capped a nearly four-year effort to cut off China's access to the video app used by over 170 million Americans. He said TikTok would remain available in the U.S. during the legal challenge, but TikTok has argued the app isn't a security threat. TikTok CEO Z Chu says its parent company is not controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. Party, and that TikTok is investing in $2 billion in trust and safety and stores all U.S.-based data in cloud servers, owned by Oracle. The U.S. government for years has been trying to ban the app, citing that the Beijing government can demand U.S. user data from ByteDance under Chinese national security law. The app also allegedly pushes Chinese propaganda via the app's algorithms. Students across the country have joined in protests for U for their universities tied to to divest from Israel, like we have seen at Columbia University. Due to the protests, the university shifted to full virtual classes for the rest of the semester for the safety of their Jewish student base. Students at a number of other colleges protested in similar ways. Students at Yale University protested, leading to police arresting 47 students. A Jewish, a Jewish student was also hospitalized at this protest. At NYU, 133 students were arrested after violence broke out during a protest Monday. In Massachusetts, around 100 Emerson students gathered on Boylston Street in support of Columbia University's protests. Harvard has shut down Harvard Yard until Friday afternoon to avoid any protests, and MIT and Tufts have seen group protests. All schools say they will hold any student accountable who violates any school policies. In a follow-up to a story we brought to you about forever chemicals in our drinking water, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has des designated two widely used forever chemicals as hazardous substances under the United States Superfund law. The two designated chemicals under the PFAS family known as PFAs and PFOSs are considered forever chemicals because they take a long time to break down in the environment and in the human body. This ruling will now allow the EPA to investigate and clean up leaks and spills of these harmful chemicals. It will also ensure that polluters are charged for the cleanup of contamination involving these chemicals. This class of chemicals helps repel water and oil and was used in products like 
like Teflon and firefighting foam for decades. While manufacturing was largely phased out due to health concerns, the chemicals can still be found in hundreds of household items and in drinking water systems. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more after the break. James. He was surprised to find out that he has elevated blood pressure, which could turn into high blood pressure. So he talked with his doctor about a healthy path to get his numbers down. He quit smoking, which makes a big difference for his overall heart health. He also cut down on salt by watching out for high sodium on food labels and added a 30 minute walk five days a week to his routine. These healthy steps weren't easy, but lowering his blood pressure was worth it. Learn more about his healthy path. Welcome back. The Braintree School Committee voted to support a budget plan that calls for cutting three, 33 jobs and larger class sizes. The school committee voted 6 to 1 to approve the $79.8 million school budget for the 2024-2025 school year. The previous plan would have cut 41 positions from the school systems. With the 33 positions being cut, about 10 are accounted for through retirement, vacancies, or attrition. The proposed budget is a 7% increase in next year's public school budget. Here's more from Superintendent Lee on the breakdown of the budget. And at 79.9, the district will have larger elementary sections without redistricting. This was um, something that has been discussed. Uh, we do not have to redistrict at 79.9, but we would be accepting some large class sizes and elementary grades, upwards of 23 to 24 students. So that's the trade-off. You don't have to redistrict, you accept larger class sizes. If we were to redistrict, those, those class sizes would come down somewhat. Uh, this is a slide that people have seen previously. Uh, we, we're looking to add back wh where you see uh, the yellow highlight. So initially we were gonna cut media at the elementary, uh, 3.8 positions or 285,000. Uh, we were going to cut uh, 7.2 positions out of the middle school, um, or 510,000. We were going to cut a teacher from each subject area at the high school, eight in total for 668,000. And then we had budgeted 50,000 for the uh, in, uh, savings if you went an internal superintendent search. In total, it would have been 41.5 positions. This uh, changes those numbers. Again, uh, media would remain at the elementary, so you would not save that 3.8 positions. Those would be returned to the overall budget. We would be adding back math lab in grade five. So rather than 7.2 positions from the middle school, it'd only be 5.2 positions. And at the high school, we'd add back one position in each subject area or full full-time position. So rather than eight, that number becomes four. And obviously you can see the superintendent search uh, is zeroed out because there'd be no savings there. So uh, now under this, it would be a reduction in positions of 33.3 um, or a total of $3.8 million. These would be the articles under what I just described. Uh, again, the total comes to 79, 891, 338. There is an offset that would come from the town side of 650000 which is the non-operation of Manadequit and Old South. Uh, but that gets us to the 79,891,338, or a 5.8% increase. On the other hand, Braintree Mayor Aaron Joyce asked the school committee to come up with a 1% increased budget. Joyce was the sole dissenter on the school committee's Monday night votes on 10 budget categories, but she explained that her vote wasn't representative of her desire for a fully funded school system. Here's more from the mayor on why she voted against the budget and her thoughts on the tax override. My vote tonight is going to be reflective of what the town is able to afford which is unfortunately not what I want to be voting on, but it is the reality of, um, of the town's resources. And as a representative of the town's resources, um, that is how my vote is going to be reflected. But I will say um, I will be working very hard to accommodate all of these asks in the override proposal. Um, we had been preparing for 79.5 in all of our data in all of our projections, the real challenge for the town is that these are reoccurring expenses, which is why the override is an appropriate metric to meet the needs because the override is a permanent reoccurring tax that the town will receive to fill this gap. Any amount that we extend above the 79.5, which is what we were preparing for, um, makes the gap year over year larger. 
Um, so wanting to accommodate that, what the the budget with the override that we're putting forward is something that's tied to a multi-year plan that is taking into consideration the very real growth of the town's resources, which without economic development and new growth is only two to three percent. I spent 10 years sitting on the planning board watching projects come and fail and seeing other communities bring in new growth um, in business areas um, all throughout their town. Those are the resources that we need. And we need to stay in this discussion moving forward. Regardless of an override success or failure, we cannot forget that there are other ways that the community can raise revenue. Um, and I'll be wor working very hard um, to do that and to pull all the levers override, fail, or succeed. But I just wanted to comment tonight that my vote on these articles is going to be in support of um, the level funded. I think as we move forward beyond this, if we do have an unsuccessful override, um, the committee should go back and make sure that the 75-5, whatever potential cuts may be made or whatever potential resources the town could have to, to not have a level funded budget, I think that plays into the override success. Um, is something that this committee should not lose sight of. And, and I would encourage uh, finance and operations to continue to consider the what ifs um, so that we are best suited um, to stretch our dollar if we have to, um, pending the failure of an override. I think you know that's our due diligence um, to plan for the worst case scenario. Um, but I just wanted to say that ahead of the vote, um, I will be um, not, not voting in favor of this, but we'll be working on it with my override. Um, dual proposal to the town council. So nay on this, unfortunately. Okay. Thank you. You can watch the full meeting now on BCAM TV's government channel, Comcast Channel 8 and Verizon Channel 26, or head to youtube.com slash BCAM TV. The Braintree Community Partnership on Substance Use is partnering up with Nurtured Roots LLC to put on the event Mindful Families at the Town Hall. The event is aimed to help Braintree residents learn how to reduce stress, improve focus, manage emotions, and experience relaxation of mind and body with your family. The program is free and includes take-home materials and drawings for a variety of books and mindfulness tools. Join the fun on Sunday, May 5th from 1 to 3 p.m. For questions, please contact Jennifer Lynn at nurturedrootsma at gmail.com or call her at 603-591-7484. Braintree's annual rabies clinic sponsored by the Town of Braintree, Braintree JCs, and Dr. Joseph Cosman, DMV of the VCA, will be held on Saturday, May 4th from 10 a.m. to noon outside of Braintree Town Hall. The vaccination fee per animal is $15 and residents are asked to bring their animal's current rabies certificate. The American Red Cross is visiting Braintree for their initiative Sound the Alarm, Save a Life. The initiative aims to install more working smoke alarms in local homes. According to the Red Cross, working smoke detectors can cut the risk of death from home fires in half. So on May 18th, volunteers from the Red Cross and Braintree Fire Department are partnering up to install new smoke detectors in Braintree homes between 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Appointments are still available and you can head to soundthealarm.org slash MA to book it now. The annual Braintree Beautification Day will be held the morning of April 27th, according to Mayor Joyce. Volunteers are asked to meet at 8 a.m. at Braintree Town Hall, 1 John F. Kennedy Memorial Drive. Upon arrival, those participating will get location suggestions for cleaning and items to help them on their journey like rakes, bags, and work gloves. In case of bad weather, the rain date will be May 6th. For more information, contact the Mayor's Office at 781-794-8100 or the Recreation Office at 781-794-8901. In addition to Braintree Beautification Day, the town is finding new ways to get residents involved in beautifying the town more regularly. The mayor's office announced an initiative called Blue Bag Campaign, where residents can pick up a blue bag and collect trash anywhere in town. Residents can now help beautify the town while working with friends, while you're on a walk, or just at a neighborhood park. When the bag is full, just leave it securely tied near the curb and alert the mayor's office where you left it. Once you call, the DPW will swing by and pick it up. For more information, head to BraintreeMA.gov. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area.
Hi, I'm Tom Lyons, a retired captain from the Quincy Fire Department and the author of the book, Fighting Fire, A Proactive Approach. Do you know that electrical failures are the third leading cause of home fires? Cords and plugs led in this category, while extension cords dominated this category. To avoid these fires, plug heat-generated appliances directly into an outlet. Do not use power strips or extension cords on these appliances. Power strips are designed for use with electronics only. Do not put electrical cords underneath rugs or pinch behind furniture. Do not overload outlets. Charge laptops and phones on hard surfaces only. Finally, if an electrical device is not working as designed, it is time to repair it or replace it. Be conscious of your home environment and be safe. And thank you for doing so. Welcome back to Branchy Today. Now let's get right into more stories. With summer just around the corner, health professionals are urging people to take precautions as we enter tick season. New England has two primary tick species, the dog tick and the black-legged tick, also known as the deer tick. Both are most active in the spring and summer. While the deer tick is smaller, it does carry Lyme disease. Three precautions that will help protect against ticks are tick repellent, permethrin treated clothing such as socks, shirts, and pants, and wearing long sleeves and long pants. A high-level Quincy official is the subject of a police investigation into alleged financial irregularities. Thomas Clasby, the city's director of elder services, was notified on the investigation and placed on paid leave when he arrived to work on the morning of Friday, April 19th. Within two days, officials said it became clear that the issues were of a potentially substantive nature and would require a full investigation. Quincy police detectives are leading the investigation and the city has hired an independent firm to conduct a forensic audit of the department. The precise nature of the financial irregularities and the amount of sums involved remain unknown. Quincy Mayor Thomas Cope said that he isn't yet aware of how far back in time the irregularities may go. The operator of the annual Weymouth Spring Carnival is issuing refunds to people affected by the event's early wrap-up this weekend due to a brawl that broke out on Saturday. The carnival began Wednesday, April 17th and was scheduled to run through Sunday, April 21st. Fiesta Shows, which runs the carnival, made a statement on Facebook saying, quote, Thank you for your patience while we determine the next steps in this unprecedented occurrence at our Weymouth location. End quote. The company said that those who purchase wristbands or mega passes online contact customer support at fiestashows.com. Fair pass cards with ride credits can also be redeemed at any location or fair as they do not expire. The third annual Quincy Multicultural Festival is scheduled for Saturday, May 11th. Cultural displays will fill pageant fields for the festival that aims to highlight Quincy's diversity. The event will include performances, food from around the world, and displays put together by Quincy families to showcase their heritage. The festival is registered as a nonprofit organization, and the event will raise money to support families interested in participating. The Quincy Multicultural Festival is scheduled for noon to 4 p.m. Saturday, May 11th. For more information, visit quincymulticulturalfestival.org. If you're a local soccer fan, you, prob you probably already know how big of a deal the game is between Inter and Miami CF and the New England Revolution on Saturday, April 27th. It's a chance to see legendary soccer player Lionel Messi without having to leave New England. Since the 2022 World Cup champion has a relatively short contract with the team, it could be a rare event. With this, the sold-out match is a recipe for a traffic jam. Fortunately, the MBTA commuter rail and Keolis have presented another option for fans headed to the game. $10 round-trip tickets on the MBTA commuter rail are on sale now for people looking to avoid game day traffic. Tickets must be bought on the M-Ticket app and will likely sell out before game day. No refunds or exchanges will be available and the special event train will run from both South Station and Providence. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. That time of the year again, flu season. Getting vaccinated against the flu and COVID-19 can help keep you, your family, and your community healthy. You can even get both vaccines at the same time. Visit mass.gov slash flu shot to learn. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Today in entertainment, we have three recommendations for you to watch. 
First, Challengers follows Tashi, a tennis player turned coach who has transformed her husband from a mediocre player into a world famous Grand Slam champion. To jolt him out of his recent losing streak, she makes him play a Challenger event, close to the lowest level of tournament on the Pro Tour. Tensions soon run high when he finds himself standing across the net from his former best friend and Tashi's former boyfriend. The film stars Zendaya and Mike Faced. You can watch Challengers now in theaters. Next, Abigail follows a group of would-be criminals who kidnap the 12-year-old daughter of a powerful underworld figure. Holding her for ransom in an isolated mansion, their plan starts to unravel when they discover their young captive is actually a bloodthirsty vampire. The film stars Angus Cloud and Melissa Barrera. You can watch Abigail now in theaters. Finally, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare follows British Prime Minister Winston Churchill and a group of military officials who hatch a daring plan to neutralize Hitler's fleet of German U-boats during World War II. Made up of a crew of rogues and mavericks, the top secret combat unit uses unconventional techniques to battle the Nazis and change the course of the war. The film stars Henry Cavill and Alan Richson. You can watch The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare now in theaters. That'll do it for news today. Remember, if you're a customer of Verizon, you can watch Bcam TV in high definition on channel 2128. I'm Martha Constantinides, Martha Constantinides and thank you for watching Brainstreet Today on Bcam TV. We'll see you next time.